This is some markings on the stones. And this may be one, here may be another faint one, there still another faint one. And these, if in fact they're what he's referring to, are marks of the Masons. Uh, after the late 13th century, when just before the uh, Renaissance began, but when artists were for the first time taking pride in their creativity rather than adhering to the strict uh, conventions of art in the medieval period, they began to signature, if you will, their works. In fact, even he points out that in the 12th century, um, Maestro Matteo uh, put his own car carving, and we'll see it sometime later, I can find it in the notes, on one of his uh, statues in this entire complex as an evidence of that prematurely. The reasons these were important make sense. Not only did it reflect a pride in their workmanship, but in more pragmatically, Steve suggests it's the way they kept track of what they were to be paid. Here's where that Bota Fumiero is moored. I could do it myself right now, but it'd irritate the church and probably God. I'm surprised the church allowed these people to, in essence, deface them. One thing I notice is that no matter how I try to find um, beautiful, elegant vision, vistas, if you will, with my camera through the arches and the columns, no way can it compare to even a simple Gothic cathedral. But then, in its day, it was not intended to. It was the style. Is a row of confessionals, and one of them had uh, a sign in it, and a man, a priest, uh, it was Italian. So if there was one in English, and I had even a scintilla of conscience, I would stop and spend the next two and a half months talking with that fellow. The simple barrel vault. thing is I pan around to a church, uh, through a church that was built right at the time of the Muslim interaction with Christianity and reflect on how simple Muslim mosques are. This is somewhat the same, except for this. The altar and the organ um, are extravagant, baroque that never rises to that level in a mosque. These, I think, are the galleries that Steve was referring to up above here. And this is where the pilgrims were asked to sleep in order to keep their smell apparently elevated from the mat, those who would use the church below. This is the simplicity of the other end of the church. Um, design in that circular area only in the circumference of the circular window, if you will, nothing in it of any grandeur or excitement. The story is behind this chandelier. Closed and locked stairway down into a crypt of some... This may be a part of the old church, looking at the very primitive construction. But notice the fort-like window ports. Probably here lies at least a priest, and maybe much more. How closely did this sculpture reflect his face? What kind of a man was he really? There's a side chapel that at least has that blue and the white some prettiness to it. That, of course, is not its gauge.
built by some nobleman, of course, in the line for the entry into the tomb of St. James, which is kind of a lot like being in <coughs> Edinburgh looking for Harry Potter school. Passageway that we're following. Just notice a curious thing there, and then notice this architectural detail here, like it's the top of some kind of an arch that's now buried under this new grave. A richly carved chapel. And notice the paintwork. To uh, St. James. Through this little gateway and down this little step. Away with your sins with money. The money there, one of those candles electronically lights up. How's that for church? You fill another guilt box. It's a like icon of St. Peter or St. James. Or you get to embrace the stone statue by uh, Maestro Matteo looking into the choir. And it's on the statue, apparently, that it's absolutely covered with jewels. And behind the statue is apparently a portrait, self-portrait, self-made portrait by Matteo. Oh, it's the paintwork on the ceiling. Again, a simple example of painted carved stone. There's very little stained glass in this cathedral. That's one of the panels. I'm more interested and intrigued by this dome uh, that's painted. Probably not a fresco. Notice the size of the characters. The one in the middle, huge. Probably Jesus or somebody important for sure. And then this little dude down here on the right. Who is he? Cracks the art of this chapel, an allusion to the coming Gothic uh, filigree design, if you will, of arches. And I wonder if it was common practice to paint certain portions, like the background through the windows of this portrayal of Christ being taken from the cross and then the just naked stone of the sculpture of the main scene. What looks like interesting work on a very elaborate dome in this chapel, in which there's an ongoing service, in which I'm probably not supposed to be videoing, but here the paint's worn off quite a bit. But you can see that it might have been quite interesting. Here what looks like original painting, again a barrel vault, but notice that those panels on the vaulting uh, there may be painted into that, but that they did something to that ceiling as opposed to the blank white that we've seen in the cathedral itself. This is called the Silversmith Square because uh, it once was surrounded by the silversmith trade. In other words, they're the ones that had all the shops. There still are, as you can see down there. And maybe to some degree here, people who are uh, peddling silver, whether they're actually silversmiths or not. tower is reminiscent of the fortress-like function of this cathedral at one time. That here is of a woman sitting on St. James' tomb, holding a loft of star. And it's apparently a typical city symbol. Apparently, this is the mansion in the background that Steve refers to. Is in fact a thinly uh, disguised Baroque wall or facade uh, covering over what were several um, important homes at one time. And it was done to give some, if you will, to this place. Okay, and finally, I think down near the market, which is only right around the corner from where Ebar's uh, 
Santiago luggage storage is, so we'll roam through the market just for the fun that it usually is. <coughs> this will be probably a pretty cleaned up market um, for the EU standards, etc. today. Uh, it's not the um, less, less well cleaned ones of the past, but it's not probably as antiseptic as Japan's were. Interest like church tower. I guess we'll just wander into the market right here. Market, you can be very sure this is cleaned up from what it used to be. This looks like something Albertsons whipped up to make it look very provincial. Live in a place like this, this is where you do your shopping most easily. The Department of History building right here. And right around the corner to the right, right over there, is where the baggage, Santiago baggage storage by Ivar is, just so you know.